Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to show you my Luminar Neo editing workflow. If you've ever watched any of my videos or if you subscribe to my newsletter, you know that I'm often talking about the importance of developing a consistent, reliable post-production workflow because, in my opinion, you won't get consistent results if you do not have a reliable workflow that you could use from image to image to image. I want to stress that there isn't a right and a wrong workflow. There are simply workflows that work right for you. What I'll be showing you is my workflow. I hope that what I show you in this video will help you develop a workflow that is best for you and your photography. In this video, I'm going to show you my workflow on two different images. One is, quote, a wildlife image. It's actually this image of the gorilla in a zoo. And the other is this landscape image. We're going to start out with the landscape image. Now, both of these photos are unedited RAW files. And what I like to do first, if needed, is reduce noise. Now, this specific image was shot at ISO 64, so there really isn't any noise to speak of, so I don't need to do that. The next thing I would do, if needed, is crop and or straighten the image. Now, I happen to get this in camera the way I want it, so I don't need to crop and or straighten the image. Now, the next thing I would do, if needed, is I would go to develop raw and I would change the camera profile if I wanted to use a different camera profile. I like the Luminar default camera profile, so I'm going to stay with that. The next thing I would do, if needed, is I would go down to color and I would adjust the white balance if needed. And the white balance is fine in this image, so I do not need to do that. So I haven't done anything yet, but I will be doing something now. The next thing I will do is adjust what I call tone. Tone in the image is the light and the black and whites. So I'll go to light, and with this image, I want to open up the shadows, and I'll bring in the highlights. Now, typically, I don't use do much with contrast. Um, I prefer to uh, add contrast to my image with the blacks and whites adjustment and or with the curves adjustment. So I won't move the smart contrast slider. I will move the exposure slider if I underexposed or overexposed the shot. But in this case, I exposed the shot properly. So I'm happy with just moving these two sliders, highlights and shadows. Then I'll go down to the blacks and whites, and I want to get a black point. Now to help me get a black point, I like to turn on the clipping indicators. To do that, tap the J key. You didn't really see anything happen, but you'll notice if I bring blacks too far down, I'll get some blue on the uh, image. The blue areas are where I'm crushing the shadows. That means absolute black is there. If I print this, no detail will print there. Just absolute black ink will be put down on the paper. Now, I don't mind crushing the shadows a little bit, but in this case, I don't think it works with this image. So I'm just going to bring it down and just eyeball it till it looks good. Similarly for whites, if I go too high, I'll get this red overlay. That means I'm blowing out the highlights. That means there's no detail there at all. And if I print it, no ink is going to get put down there at all. Now, I definitely never like to blow out the highlights. So I will bring this down until all that red dissipates, which you can see there's a tiny bit. There was a tiny bit on that uh, waterfall. And just till it all dissipates. Just like that. And that is good. Now, I'll turn off the clipping indicators by tapping the J key again. Now, the next thing I will do after I'm done with tone is color. So I could go down to this color section and I could maybe increase saturation or vibrance. Um, I already did white balance. That was one of the first few things I did. Um, but in this case, I don't want to do that. I'd rather pick out the tones and colors that I want to adjust individually than do them globally with just moving saturation. Now, there's a couple different ways I could do that. I could go down to this color tool down here, and inside of this color tool is an HSL section. I could do it there. But there is a really uh, nice tool in Luminar Neo for landscape uh, images. It's down here somewhere. Uh, it's called Landscape right here in the Landscape section. I should do that. We'll roll that open. And with this, I could kind of move Golden Hour, and I could move foliage enhancer. You can see what it's doing to the trees. 
a little bit. So I like that. I'll leave that alone. But I am then going to go back up to color. And I'm going to go to the HSL section of this. And I'm going to go to luminance first. And I like to make the yellow tones in the image brighter. And those of you that watch my videos know I do this. So I make yellows brighter. I make them pretty bright. Oranges will probably go brighter too. And then I like to make the greens darker. And the reason why I do that is it, it just puts some tonal variance in the image. I have some bright yellows and some darker greens. And before I did this adjustment, like there's before, and there's after, there's before, there's after. You see how it brings out some tonal variance into this area here? A little more interest. Again, there's before and there's after. But I'm not going to stop there. Um, I am going to go to the blue, just to affect the sky a little bit. And I'll bring that down just a little. Then I'm going to go off luminance. I'm going to go to saturation. And I want to increase the saturation of the greens for sure. The oranges. Maybe the yellows. The yellows are pretty saturated though. But I'll move that up a little bit. And the blue. So let's see. That looks pretty good. So here's a before after the color adjustment. There's before. And there's after. So, so far, so good. Now, one thing, it's not too bad here, but a lot of times the water, you know, it looks green or brown, and that's, uh, like, not very attractive. Uh, there is um, a tool uh, in the landscape section called Water Enhancer. And what I'll do is I'll push that up, and I'm going to push the blue to the right, and it will just subtly change the color, and you can see how it adds a mask's a mask automatically to the water. So there's before and there's after. I think that's just a little more uh, likable that way. So I'm going to go with that. Um, now what I want to do is I want to do something to add some drama to the sky. So to do that, I'm going to go to structure, but I'm going to go to masking and I'm going to go to AI mask. And it will examine the image and find various things in the image. And one of those things I found is the sky. So I'll click on sky. Then I'll go back to adjustments. And you'll see that in structure, if I just, like, see how it's just affecting the sky. Can you see? Hopefully you can see that. And I just want to add that drama to the sky. And I think that looks pretty good. Now... If I wanted to go back and do anything in the develop tool that was here, because this was a raw file, it had develop raw, but because I did adjustments there already, you notice it just says develop. Uh, any edits you do are over here in the edits panel. So if I wanted to readjust my white and black point or anything like that, if I go to develop, everything's going to be zeroed out. See how everything's zeroed out here? What you need to do is go up to edits and then you go to the develop raw tool, and these are my adjustments. See the adjustments I did? And so I could redo things. So if I want to go and just add some little bit of saturation here, let's say I could do that. So you have to go. I just want you to be aware that you do that in the edits section. I think I'm pretty much done with this image. So I'm going to finish it off with a vignette. And more specifically, I like to do a darker vignette. Um, when you look at an image, you will tend to look at the brighter parts of the image first. And if you have some brighter parts towards the outside, it's not as pleasant a viewing experience as it could be. So what I like to do is add the darker vignette, relatively subtle. It just helps push everyone's gaze more towards the middle. And to further help that along, you could go to inner light and just like put, like brighten up the middle even more. And you could see what it did. So I'm done with this image. Here's before, and here's after. I did forget to do one thing, though. If I go back to edits, and I go back to develop, and this is, I do tend to forget to do this, because I jump out of the develop raw tool to do other things, and then I forget. Go to optics, and check all three of these boxes so that you're doing your lens corrections. And then you could go back to tools, and then you could see your full edit now. There's before. And there's after. There's before. And there's after. I probably overdid it with the color, uh, but I was just showing you. I'd go back to edits. I'll go back to develop. I'll go back to color. I'll uh, undo my saturation adjustment by double-clicking on the word saturation. It will zero it out. Then I'll go back to tools. 
and you'll see it kick in. Yeah, that, that's not too bad. So there's my landscape edit. Now let's jump over to the image of the gorilla. And you're probably wondering, well, how different is your work um, flow for a wildlife image or a zoo image? And really, it's not different. <laughs> it's pretty much the same. Um, as far as this image is concerned, compared to the last image, my last image was shot at ISO 64. This image was shot at ISO 6400. So if I zoom in, you could see that there is a considerable amount of noise. And you remember in the last image, I said that the first thing I would do if needed is reduce noise. And I didn't reduce noise on that last one because it really didn't have noise. This image has noise. So I'm going to go immediately up to noiseless raw. It's recommending a high adjustment. So I'll accept their recommendation and click high. You can see it's thinking and doing the noise reduction. Just want to mention very quickly while it was doing that, well, it's done already, is um, if you go to my website, anthonymorganti.com, I have a list of all the keyboard shortcuts found in Luminar Neo. I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. It's a PDF that you could download for free and print at home. I have a lot of different keyboard shortcut PDFs, not just for Luminar Neo. I have them for like a lot of different applications, and I have some other free stuff there as well. So again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website. You could check that out. Now let's zoom in a little more, and we could see the results. And you can see it did a really good job. There's before, and there's after. There's before, and there's after. Okay, so I took care of noise. The next thing I would do after I reduce noise is I would crop and or straighten if needed. I captured this in camera exactly like I wanted to. So I don't need to do that. The next thing I would do, if needed, is go up to Develop Raw and choose a different camera profile. I like the Luminar default camera profile, so I'm not going to change that. The next thing I would do, if needed, is adjust white balance. White balance is fine. I don't need to do that. The next thing I would do, and it's pretty much always needed, is adjust light and blacks and whites. So I'll go to light, and I'm going to jump to shadows right away since everything's kind of dark. And I'm going to open up the shadows. And I'm going to bring in the highlights a little. Then we're going to go to blacks and whites. I'm going to tap the J key to turn on the clipping indicators. I'll bring blacks down. You can see it's starting to clip. Maybe right about there. Looks pretty good. Then same thing for whites. I'll move that up. You can see I'm starting to clip there. Just bring it up till all oh, it dissipates. I think I got it all. There's a little bit like right there. Yeah, and I think that's good. So I'll tap the J key again to turn off the clipping indicators. Now, after I've done that, the next thing I'll do is color. And I could do color here, or I could jump down to the color tool down here. I could do color here, though. All I want to do is bring saturation up just a little. Not a lot of color in this image. It's mainly just the, the food that the gorilla is examining and over here. So that's just about it. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to remember to go to Optics and click these three checkboxes. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to add some detail, sharpening to the Gorilla all by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'll close down Develop Raw, and then I'm going to go to uh, Details. We're going to go to Masking. And... I don't think it will find it with the mask AI because that's more for landscape images where it's going to find water and mountains and trees and things like that. We're going to go to object select for this. And for object select, it kind of examine the image and then you can kind of draw over the area you want. You can see it has a red overlay pretty much on the entire grill. I missed a tiny piece here and maybe a little bit behind the hay or whatever that is. But I like that. That's fine. So we're going to go to adjustments and I'm going to jump right to sharpen right away and just increase sharpening. I like to work these sliders from the bottom up. So I'll then go to detail, a little bit large details, medium details, small details. I'll give you a before after of this tool only. There's before. And there's after. There's before. And there's after. So it looks pretty good. I don't want to make it too sharp. It actually might be a little too sharp, actually. I'll bring this down a little bit. Uh, my main goal when I edit 
wildlife images or zoo images is I really don't want to misrepresent the animal. I want the animal to look exactly like it looks. So I don't want to make the eyes look a different color or the plumage or the fur look a different color or anything like that. I want to really make sure that the animal looks like the animal looked. I do want it sharp, but I don't want it over sharp. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to jump down here towards the bottom, and I'm going to uh, grab Dodge and Burn. What I often like to do is I like to make the, especially on an animal such as this, that the eyes are set way back. I like to brighten them a little bit, but I don't want to brighten the overall gorilla. I just want to brighten the eye area. So I'm going to go to Dodge and Burn, and we're going to go to Lighten. And I'm going to leave the softness at 100, the strength at 50. That size brush is good. I could adjust the size with the slider or the bracket keys. Left bracket key will make it smaller, right bracket key larger. So I'm going to come in here and brighten the eye there and brighten the eye there. And every stroke you do is cumulative. So if I go again, I could brighten it some more and brighten this one some more. It looks decent. There's um before and after, before and after. And that's really all I wanted to accomplish there. And I'm going to finish this off like I did the other one with a vignette. And I'm going again going to use a darker vignette. If I went to the right, I'd get a light vignette. But I prefer the darker one, like I mentioned, to kind of push everyone's attention more towards the middle. I don't think it would look good with an inner light. I could try it and... Uh, maybe it does. I don't know. It might be a little too hard. Or maybe just a little bit of an inner light like that. So there's before and there's after. See, it's subtle, but it helps push everyone's gaze more towards on the gaze of the gorilla. And that's it. I'm done. So that's my editing workflow. And you can see it's consistent whether I'm doing a landscape image or I'm doing a wildlife image. Um, I do things in a specific order and I'll just say them again, uh, just in case you want to jot them down. Again, this isn't like written in stone, hopefully this helped you develop something. Maybe you want to do white balance first or whatever. Feel free, whatever works for you. But for me, I will reduce noise first if needed. Uh, after that, the next thing I do is crop and or straighten the image if needed. The next thing I will do is change the profile if needed. The next thing I do is adjust the uh, white balance if needed. The next thing I would do is adjust what I call the tone of the image. That would be the whites, blacks, shadows, highlights. I'll adjust that. And in order, it would be uh, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. But that's what I would do next. Then the next thing I would do is color adjustments. And I could do color adjustments within the develop AI or yeah, develop raw. I'm sorry, the develop raw tool or in the actual color tab. So I would adjust color, like, you know, increase saturation, increase different colors, uh, brightness levels, and saturation of different colors. And then I'll do like other things that are needed. Like in this image, I went to dodge and burn to brighten up the gorilla's eyes. I'll add the vignette at the very end. And that's what I do. And then, you know, in the previous image, I used the landscape tool that's in this landscape section. Uh, so stuff like that. So hopefully that helps you develop a workflow that works for you. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.